And Republicans release a scathing new web video raising questions about whether President Obama has been on top of the BP oil spill since day one. Is it fair? Is it accurate? Will it change hearts and minds? The debate on America Live. I hope he sees it now. now. Well, a month ago, the president made some news on the effort to secure our borders, announcing more troops and more money. But that was a month ago. Up next, to look at what's actually happening on the ground. Plus, a harsh web video taking the president to task. The RNC hammering his response to the BP spill. Is this the right message for Republicans right now? A fair and balanced debate next. How's the golf game going? No, I'm not very good. I have no idea of why the attitudes are so hands off of here. It's just unbelievable. While Congress goes after BP, a hard-hitting new web video from the Republican National Committee is out criticizing President Obama's response to the Gulf oil spill, juxtaposing the president's social calendar and a timeline of the BP disaster. They could be deploying people to the coast right now. He could be with the Corps of Engineers and the Coast Guard with these people in Plaquemines Parish doing something about these regulations. These people are crying. They're begging for something down here. And it just looks like he's not involved in this. Man, you got to get down here and take control of this. Put somebody in charge of this thing and get this thing moving. We're about to die down here. I'm just curious why you didn't pick up, you wouldn't pick up the phone and in some ways just give them a piece of your mind. Pick up the phone, pick up the phone, pick up the phone. Pick up the phone. I hope he sees it now. now. It's pretty unrelenting. Joining us now to talk about it, Kirsten Powers, columnist for the New York Post and a Fox News political analyst, and also Brad Blakeman, a former deputy advisor to President George W. Bush. Welcome to you both. Thank you. Good to be here. Kirsten, is it fair? Uh, well, it certainly is. It's, it sort of reminds me of how Democrats talked about George Bush after 9-11 and after Katrina, um, I, you know, complaining that he went on vacation, took too many bike rides uh, and, and that kind of stuff. And so I think it is fair within the sort of bounds of politics. And, I, and I, at the time with Bush and, and, and now with Obama, I would say I don't really care if a president goes on vacation because they work when they're on vacation. I think what looks bad is when the president looks like he's having fun, um, laughing and enjoying himself when people are suffering. And I think that those images of Obama don't help him. Yeah, it's difficult to see him golfing and on vacation and doing those things while the calendar of what's happening in the Gulf is unfolding as well. Brad, do you think there's any chance, because this is really bold, if you watch the whole video, it makes a very strong statement. Any chance uh, there's a backlash to Republicans because of it? I don't think so. I think the American people have already come to their own conclusion as to whether the president led on this disaster or not. And I think they've clearly said the president is not. So this reinforces already what people believe. But not only is it fair, but it's also accurate. If you notice, Democrats are not challenging the accuracy of, of this video. What they're challenging is the politicizing of a disaster, which we're not. As Kirsten actually pointed out very fairly, is uh, that the Democrats wasted no time in attacking the Bush administration after Katrina, their attacks were every day, personal and political. Uh, if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. This president said he'd be different. As a matter of fact, on day one of this administration, on their website, the first website posting for the new president was attacking President Bush on Katrina, saying this would never happen under their watch. It's happened 10 times worse under their watch with a BP disaster. All right, Kirsten, they've taken a lot of heat for maybe not effectively communicating what was going on if they were engaged fully from day one. The president's now visited numerous times. He's given a speech from the Oval Office, very significant. Uh, he's met with BP now, and they've worked out some kind of deal. Is there any way for him to make up for that lost time at this point? I mean, because it's, you know, all, all hands on deck at this point. I, I don't think so. I, I, I think that people were hoping be, when he get, was giving this Oval Office address that there was so, he was going to do something to kind of turn a corner, uh, maybe put out some sort of broad vision for the future, do something to 
really prevent this from happening again, which in my opinion would be completely banning the, you know, this deep water offshore drilling. Uh, but he really hasn't done it, and the damage is done. And I just think he has to hope that, that they're correct, that uh, in a couple of weeks, 90% of the oil will have been, uh, you know, cleaned up, but not cleaned up, but, you know, stopped coming out, I guess. And, you know, and hope that it, that it stops, because otherwise, I just feel like the mishandling has been so bad uh, that, that they just have to wait for some time to come between this and, you know, in the future. And Brad, this may be one of the rare occasions where the two of you agree on a lot of stuff about what's happening here and how the president has handled this. I mean, questions now about his leadership. He was a very effective campaigner, but this has been a huge struggle, a huge tragedy, and now he seems to be floundering. I mean, can he put it back together short of actually getting this thing plugged? Does he make up any ground until that happens and it's 100 percent sealed? Well, Shen, what he's doing now is he's overcompensating for that lack of leadership at the beginning. And his overcompensation is something which will also hurt him because all of a sudden he's woken up to this challenge, which is still ongoing for the people in the Gulf. Now, the $20 billion, what we want to know, and I think one of the things Joe Barton was talking about earlier today was, does that mean that the American taxpayer is going to be made whole? Will the federal government be reimbursed and state and local governments? Or is it just businesses and individuals? Every taxpayer is on the hook for a huge response, which will also be in the billions of dollars. Are we going to be made whole? And that's what the president needs to discuss also with the American people, is not only the people directly in the Gulf, but every taxpayer now is affected by this disaster. All right, before I let the two of you go, I want to uh, finish up this debate and get you to react to something else that's going on here, an offshoot of this. The president's Oval Office address on the oil leak crisis, pretty much harshly reviewed by a lot of pundits across all media from the left and right. Check this out. This is what happens when uh, Press Secretary of the White House, Robert Gibbs, gets asked a question about a couple of the critics on the left. Here's what he said. If the president had decided to run for president based on what the pundits were saying in December of 2006 and January of 2007, he'd be in the Senate. No, no, hold on. I, I appreciate the pulse, uh, the hand on the pulse of America by those that live uh, on cable TV. I, I don't actually think that's where uh, all of real America lives. Our viewers here at Fox News might disagree with that. Uh, just the same, Kirsten, your crack on uh, what Gibbs had to say. You know, I, I, um, what America should know, uh, and anyone in the media knows, you know this, Shannon. They love to follow what people in cable news and the pundits say when we say nice things about them. And uh, during the campaigns or any time the president gives a speech, there's an email that comes out uh, from the press shop that tells us all the good things that are being said about the president. But when bad things are said about the president, then we're all stupid. All right, Brad, uh, quickly, a final word from you. Mr. Gibbs needs to get out of the ivory tower of the White House, get out of those gates and talk to real people because the real people in America are saying exactly what the pundits are saying. The, pres the president's harshest critics have been from the left. All right. Kirsten Powers, Brad Blakeman, great to see you both. Thanks. Good to be here.